Jeff Bezos just got the shock of his life. His $10 billion new Glenn rocket failed catastrophically. Three engines died during landing, but that's not the worst part. Two top executives are abandoning ship right now. The engine boss, gone. The new Glenn program leader, retiring on launch day itself. August 15th, same day as their desperate second attempt. While SpaceX fires off 10 Starship flights this year, Blue Origin can't even manage two. The leaked internal meeting reveals the brutal truth. They're missing every target for 2025. Let's dive right in. The 147-day lie that fooled everyone. January 16th, 2025. Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket pierced the sky. Jeff Bezos watched from mission control as his 23-year dream finally became reality. The rocket reached orbit, the world celebrated. Media headlines screamed, Blue Origin joins the elite. But for exactly 147 days, nobody talked about what really happened during landing. Three engines died, not malfunctioned, died. The booster plummeted into the Atlantic Ocean at terminal velocity. 20 stories of rocket and metal, gone. Yet Blue Origin called it a success because the upper stage reached orbit. That's like calling a plane crash a successful flight because the passengers made it to cruising altitude before everything went wrong. Here's the bombshell the company buried. Linda Kova, the engineering mastermind behind those BE-4 engines, knew this would happen. She had warned management months earlier. Her concerns were dismissed. Her calculations were ignored. And now? She's retiring rather than watch her life's work destroy Blue Origin's reputation. When your top engineers start running, Linda Kova didn't just retire, she escaped. 20 years of rocket engine development and she's walking away right when her engines are finally flying. The timing screams one thing. She knows something catastrophic is coming. But wait, it gets worse. Jared Jones, the man who built the entire New Glenn program from scratch, just announced his retirement date. August 15th. Ring any bells? That's the exact day Blue Origin is attempting their make or break second launch. You don't retire on launch day. You don't abandon your life's work at the moment of truth. Unless you know that moment of truth is going to be a disaster. Industry sources are whispering about explosive boardroom meetings. Jeff Bezos demanding eight launches in 2025. Jones reportedly laughing and saying they'd be lucky to achieve three. The math is simple. If your second launch happens in August and you need six more flights before December 31st, you're looking at one launch every three weeks. For a rocket that took seven months between flights one and two, impossible doesn't begin to cover it. The technical nightmare. Hey, can't hide. The B-4 engine burns liquid oxygen and liquid methane. Sounds clean, sounds advanced, sounds perfect. But here's what Blue Origin doesn't want you to know. This fuel combination is a nightmare to control during landing. When you're descending at hundreds of miles per hour, trying to slow down a 20-story rocket using controlled explosions, precision matters. The propellant management system needs to deliver exact amounts of fuel to each engine. One miscalculation and you're not landing. You're crashing. That's exactly what happened on January 16th. The propellant system failed. The engine bleed control malfunctioned. Three of seven engines simply stopped working. The booster fell like a stone. But here's the kicker. Linda Kova's team identified these exact problems during ground testing. They requested 18 more months of development. Management gave them six weeks and told them to make it work. Now those same engines are supposed to execute a perfect landing in August? With the woman who designed them watching from retirement? With the program director cleaning out his office on launch day? The SpaceX comparison that crushes dreams. While Blue Origin celebrates reaching orbit once, SpaceX has launched Starship 10 times this year. While Blue Origin crashes boosters into the ocean, SpaceX catches them with mechanical arms. The numbers are brutal. SpaceX lands boosters on drone ships with 95% success rates. Blue Origin can't even keep their engines running during descent. SpaceX reuses boosters within weeks of landing. Blue Origin's boosters become expensive artificial reefs. But here's the part that should terrify Jeff Bezos. SpaceX achieved all of this with less than half the money Blue Origin has burned through. 23 years and $10 billion. 
and they're still crashing rockets while their competitor is catching them out of the sky. The customers are noticing. NASA's Escapade Mars mission was supposed to launch on New Glenn in 2024. When Blue Origin couldn't deliver, NASA scrambled for alternatives. Mars launch windows only open every 26 months. Miss one, wait over two years for the next chance. Amazon's Project Kuiper needs Blue Origin to launch 3,236 satellites. They've already booked backup launches with SpaceX and ULA. Amazon doesn't trust Blue Origin to deliver their own satellites. Let that sink in. The August 15th gamble that could end everything. August 15th isn't just another launch, it's Blue Origin's last stand. They're attempting two nearly impossible tasks simultaneously. Successfully deploying a real payload worth hundreds of millions of dollars and landing a booster that's already failed once. Only SpaceX has ever landed a booster on a moving platform in the ocean. Blue Origin's first attempt ended with three engine failures and a crash booster. Their second attempt is happening with the chief engineer retired and the program director walking out the door. The payload makes this terrifying. Unlike their first flight's dummy cargo, this mission carries either NASA's Escapade spacecraft or the Blue Moon Lunar Lander. Both are irreplaceable. Both represent years of development and hundreds of millions in taxpayer money. A failure doesn't just mean another crash booster. It means destroying irreplaceable scientific equipment. It means potentially ending Blue Origin's relationship with NASA. It means Jeff Bezos watching $10 billion of investment collapse in real time. The leaked meeting that exposed everything. Here's what Blue Origin desperately doesn't want you to know. Dave Limp, the current CEO, admitted in an internal meeting that they might achieve one more flight beyond August. Not will, might. Not confident, hopeful. This is a company that started 2025 promising eight flights. They're now praying for three total launches by year's end. That's not missing targets. That's complete organizational collapse. Less 2025 spent in goal to organizational collapse, in deception of a bastion effects and the bioration of Crashion. The technical teams are working 80-hour weeks trying to solve engine problems that should have been resolved years ago. The manufacturing division can't produce hardware fast enough to support even a modest launch schedule. The leadership is abandoning ship at the worst possible moment. But here's the most damning detail. Blue Origin's own engineers are privately betting against their own August 15th launch date, not because of weather or range conflicts, but because they genuinely don't believe the rocket will be ready. The $10 billion failure. Jeff Bezos has spent $10 billion, over 23 years to build a rocket that can't land. SpaceX revolutionized spaceflight with half that investment. Virgin Galactic achieved space tourism with a fraction of that budget. Rocket Lab built a thriving launch business with pocket change compared to Blue Origin spending. What does $10 billion buy you at Blue Origin? One successful orbit, one crashed booster, two fleeing executives, a manufacturing crisis, a reputation for overpromising and underdelivering. Meanwhile, SpaceX is launching astronauts, landing boosters, building space stations, and planning Mars missions. All while Blue Origin struggles to execute their second flight without killing anyone. The Amazon connection makes this personal. Project Kuiper promises global satellite internet to compete with Starlink. If Blue Origin can't deliver reliable launches, Amazon's entire space strategy collapses. SpaceX gets an unchallenged monopoly. Jeff Bezos loses to Elon Musk in the one arena where he thought he had advantages. Why August 15th? will make or break everything. The August 15th launch isn't just technical validation, it's an existential test. Can Jeff Bezos's methodical, perfectionist approach compete with SpaceX's move fast and break things philosophy? Can unlimited funding overcome fundamental engineering problems? Can Blue Origin prove they belong in the commercial space race? The stakes couldn't be higher. National security depends on having alternatives to SpaceX for military launches. NASA needs reliable partners for scientific missions. Amazon needs Blue Origin to succeed for their satellite internet dreams. But right now, the two people who know Blue Origin's rockets better than anyone else are walking away. Linda Kova won't be there to troubleshoot engine problems. Jared Jones won't be there to manage the mission. Dave Limp will be alone in mission control 
watching engines that have already failed once attempt an impossible landing. The countdown to August 15th has begun. In less than two months, we'll know if Blue Origin's 23-year journey ends in triumph or disaster. The leaked meetings suggest even they don't know which it will be. But one thing is certain. Jeff Bezos's space empire hangs in the balance, and the people who bill it are already running for the exits. So here we are, watching 23 years and $10 billion hang in the balance. Blue Origin's story isn't just about rockets or engines. It's about what happens when perfectionism meets reality. While SpaceX moves fast and breaks things, Blue Origin moves slow and still breaks things. The question isn't whether they'll succeed on August 15th. The question is whether they can survive long enough to learn from their failures. This space race isn't over, not by a long shot. SpaceX dominates today, but history shows us that empires rise and fall. Maybe Blue Origin's methodical approach will pay off, eventually. Maybe their crashes today become tomorrow's breakthroughs. But here's what keeps me up at night. What if we're watching the death of competition in commercial space? What if Jeff Bezos's retreat leaves Elon Musk unchallenged? The cosmos doesn't care about our timelines or budgets. It only rewards those who refuse to quit. What do you think? Is Blue Origin's slow and steady approach doomed in today's space race? Or will their patience ultimately triumph over SpaceX's speed? Drop your thoughts below. And if you want to dive deeper into the technical nightmares plaguing modern rockets, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, this story is just getting started. Until next time, keep looking up. SpaceX hook opening booster 16 just rolled back to get its hot stage ring. That's it. That's the secret. But here's why this matters more than you think. This single upgrade transforms how fast SpaceX can launch. We're talking about rapid-fire missions that nobody else can match. And the timing? Perfect. While Booster 16 gets this game-changing upgrade, SpaceX is pile-driving foundations for the Gigabay, their rocket factory on steroids. This isn't just another test. This is SpaceX shifting into mass production mode. Let's dive right in. The revolution hidden in plain sight. So this hot stage ring upgrade, it's not what you think it is. Everyone sees Booster 16 getting standard maintenance, but watch closely. The timing reveals everything. Static fire test, perfect. Immediate rollback, unusual. Hot stage ring installation, that's where the story gets interesting. Here's what makes this different. Every previous Starship flight used expendable hot stage rings, use once, throw away. But Booster 16's getting something new, something reusable something that changes the entire economics of spaceflight. Why does this matter? Because reusable hot stage rings mean rapid booster turnaround. And rapid turnaround means, well, you'll see. The scale will blow your mind. Standing next to these machines changes everything you think you know about rockets. Booster 16 towers 230 feet above you. That's a 20-story building that flies to space and lands back on Earth. But size creates problems nobody talks about. Every extra pound of hardware means less payload to orbit. Every complex system means more failure points. Every second of separation time burns precious fuel. The hot stage ring solves this elegantly. Think of it like a perfectly timed relay race. The booster hands off to Starship at exactly the right moment. No fumbling, no dropped batons, no wasted energy. But here's the twist. SpaceX isn't installing these rings for current missions. They're preparing for something that requires dozens of boosters operating simultaneously. What could possibly need that kind of firepower? The Gigabay bombshell. While cameras focused on Booster 16, something massive was happening in the background. Those pile drivers weren't just making noise. They were laying the foundation for SpaceX's most ambitious project yet. The Gigabay will revolutionize rocket production. Current pace? One starship every few months. Gigabay target? Multiple ships per month. Maybe even per week. But here's what nobody realizes. The construction timeline is insane. Sheet piles going in around the clock. 
concrete forms appearing overnight, crews working in shifts that never stop. This isn't normal construction urgency. This is emergency level acceleration. Like they're racing against a deadline only they know about. The question haunts every construction decision. What's forcing this timeline? What's driving SpaceX to compress years of work into months? The infrastructure tells all pad two construction reveals SpaceX's true intentions. Water manifold systems designed for much higher launch rates. Deluge systems sized for massive thermal loads. Draw works engineered for rapid operations. This infrastructure costs tens of millions of dollars. You don't spend that money unless you absolutely need dual launch capability, unless you're planning something that requires two pads operating simultaneously.